Hi everybody, welcome to Accounting 2. I think most of us are picking up from Accounting 1, but if it's uh, if you've had a little gap, that's okay, we can catch you up. I just wanted to walk you through the course and um, show you um, show your way around, make sure you know where everything is. If you've had Accounting 1 recently, it should be pretty similar, but there are some changes, so stick with me, and some reminders are always a good idea. So here's what the course looks like when we sign in. Start here is a good place to start. That's why I call it that. Here are um, some getting started, some orientation material, uh, the syllabus, the schedule, and some other things. So just let's take a look at at some of these. Um, these are here. I think sometimes people forget they're there, but these these are designed to answer most of your questions. So I'll go ahead and get uh, these guys started. So. Um, you're probably familiar with most of this, but let's um, let's go through it just uh, just to be just to be sure. Um, if you uh, well, you're already in the courses. You probably know this one, but if you took Accounting One while it was still under this book, you don't have to pay for anything. You can just enroll right in Accounting Two, and it knows you paid for two semesters. If you bought it under a different book, it's going to ask you for payment, but you can use the um, the temporary pass the temporary access for a while till till you get that straightened out. You have to come to campus for the exams. There's three exams and a final. Um, there are due dates, so uh, that's a little change from last semester. I have weekly due dates in there. As long as you submit it, the assignment, the homework assignment, by the due date, you get full credit. If you submit it late, you get partial credit, but you can still submit it late for partial credit. Um, don't miss a deadline. So if I'm not, a, I'm not going to extend due dates for homework because you can still work on those for partial credit. For the exams, the exams will be open for at least a week, probably more like 10 days. They are always due on Sundays. I recommend that you do not wait until Sundays. If you wait till Sunday and then you get sick or your car breaks down or your password expires and IT isn't open on Sundays to set it, then you missed an exam and that's 20% of your grade. Since it's there for 10 days, there's really no reason to miss an exam. Um, the the due date, the Sunday due date, is the last possible day to take it, but I do not recommend waiting until that day. You're just taking a big chance. There's a lot of things that could go wrong. And once the exam opens up and people can review it, I can't let you take that exam anymore. So um, there's only three of those in addition to the final, so make sure you make those dates. Uh, no group assignments. We follow along at a 15-week schedule. And um, if you're new to online classes, uh, the flexibility is great. It does take more of your own time. So it's not going to save you time. It's just going to make that time more flexible. And often it m means it's going to require more time on you because you have to work a little bit um, longer to get it. So um, just keep that in mind. If you're traveling, you can work ahead of time. You can work, you know, you don't have to be here to do it. You can access your MyLab stuff from anywhere. But um, if you're going to be away during a, an exam, then you would really want to plan to make that up, that exam before you go. Um, and I check my email regularly. If you sent me an email and you haven't heard back in, say, 24 hours, go ahead and send it again. I promise I won't get offended. Um, uh, but sometimes this stuff does get buried. So, um, but I try to answer everything pretty quickly. Tips for doing well. Uh, take responsibility. You know, again, if you're taking an online class, you really are teaching yourself in many ways. So make sure you um, uh, give yourself the time to do that. There's lots and lots of tools available in accounting in my accounting lab. You don't have to use all of them, but it is up to you to use them. Do not procrastinate. That is that is the biggest thing. That's the biggest reason I think people don't do well in accounting is because they don't allot themselves enough time to do well. Have a backup plan. Um, if you don't have reliable internet at home, make sure you have somewhere you can go. The LSC is open seven days a week. Uh, practice, practice, practice is the only way to learn this stuff. You cannot learn accounting just by reading the book or just by watching somebody else do it. You have to get in there and do it and practice. And the more you practice, the easier it gets. Um, this is my suggested weekly workflow, which I, I put out for my online students. Um, it seems like a lot, but it, it, I promise it'll save you time in the long run. The first thing you should do is read the chapter. Um, 
so many people skip that step and you, you just end up having to spend more time later on. So read the chapter before you get in there. I have a video posted, I actually have two or three videos posted for each chapter. It's me talking about the chapter and working through problems very similar to what I'd be doing in class. Um, a lot of those problems are actually in your graded homework problems. So watch the videos. I'm solving those problems for you. So um, uh, then you got to do the homework. And like I said, I have graded homework this time. <clears throat> I just have one assignment for each chapter, which is a little bit different than what we had before. Some of those problems are included in the videos or something very, very similar to it. Uh, so if you watch the, the videos, half your homework is, is pretty much done. Then you'll have two or three more problems to do. Those will be a little bit longer problems, but it's just you need to kind of apply what you've learned and get a little practice in there. Again, if you wait till Sunday night, you're not really giving yourself that much time to get all of that done. And the other thing is the homework. You can work them as many times as you want. And so if you start early enough, you can work those problems over and over again. There's no reason not to have 100% on all the homeworks. If you wait until 10 o'clock Sunday night, you're not giving yourself a chance to do that. So if you want some extra practice, go to the study plan. And I'll show you that when we, um, when we get there. But that does not affect your grade, and you can practice as much as you want. Then the other thing that I really recommend, and this is even more important in Accounting 2 than it was in Accounting 1. As you're going through, make yourself a cheat sheet for the chapter. Um, include the main topics, things you struggled with. Maybe you just want to kind of um, write things in your own way. When you get to the exam, you can use those to take the practice exam and see how you did. Maybe you need to modify it a little bit. The final exam, though, is not open book and open notes. You have a limited number of notes. In Accounting 1, a lot of what we did one chapter kind of built on the other one. But in Accounting 2, it's not. It's, it's, we do a lot of different topics. So, for instance, we'll talk about partnerships in Chapter 1. I mean in chapter 12 and you won't see that again for the rest of the semester until the final. So that's a lot to remember at the end. If you've made yourself a one page cheat sheet for each chapter, when it comes time to the final you will you will have a huge advantage and you will have saved yourself so much time rather than going back and trying to relearn all this stuff and a lot of this really will like, whoa that was a long time ago, I don't remember that. So, so it seems like more work now, but it's going to save you a lot of work in the end. And come April, you will be so, so glad you did this. So um, try to keep those, make that cheat sheet while it's still fresh in your mind. It's going to be way more valuable to you and way more helpful on the final. And then if you're watching this, you're already logged in, so I don't need to do that one. So um, <clears throat> the syllabus. Um, very similar to last semester, and I'll show you what the one thing that's different. Uh, it seems to be a little slow there. Come on. Um, I'm just go oops, don't want that. And I'm going to pull one more up here while we're waiting for this is the schedule. Well, I'm going to try. Okay, so here's our syllabus. Um, there's my contact information and my hours. Um, the book is the same book we used for Accounting 1. We're on the 12th edition now. Uh, the learning outcomes are the exciting things we're going to talk about. Um, one of the things that's different in Accounting 2 is we have some more things, some things we haven't dealt with before like partnerships, corporations, manufacturing, those types of things. And then we get into the second half is really a lot about what we call managerial accounting, which is not just um, recording transactions and reporting on them, but um, actually using the information to make decisions. And I think this is, I think this is a lot more fun. I really enjoy the managerial accounting and the decision making. However, it, it's 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 harder in a way in that you know with accounting one and recording transactions it's a lot of memorizing when i see this i do that and this is always recorded the same way and you follow the gap rules and it's black and it's white and there's one right way to do it with the decision making it's a little bit different every situation is a little bit different and every that means every problem is a little bit different and there's not even one right way there's processes there's 
there's um, best practices, things that we can do, but you really have to think. You really have to, you can't just memorize and repeat, memorize and repeat. You really have to apply and learn and think. And um, and some sometimes we're a little out of practice with that. So uh, the more you do it, the the easier it gets. The big difference you will see here if you just had accounting one with me is that homework is now part of your grade. It's 5%, so it's not a lot. Your grade is still mostly the exams, but if you come out of the exams with an average of a 76 and you did all your homework, then that is going to be enough to bump you up to a B. So it's kind of the grade bumper, the extra credit. Um, like I said before, any problems that you complete before the due date, you get full credit for. If you miss the due date or you don't get it finished, you can keep on working after that, and anything that you complete after the due date, you can get 75% um, credit for it. Three exams, they're taken at the testing center, and they will be both problems and multiple choice, and you have um, two hours. The exams are open book and open note. The final is cumulative at the end of the semester, so that's all the chapters. I think we cover 12 chapters. And um, uh, that is not open book and open notes. You can use five sheets of notes, and so you can use the front and back, so that's like 10 pages of notes. That's why it's such a good idea to be making those up as you go while the material is still fresh in your head. You'll be really, really glad you did that. Um, professional behavior, for you guys, that means being active in our My Accounting Lab course at least once each week. Um, that means completing your homework assignments on time. That means uh, reading the material. That means professional communications. And, uh, well, you don't really have uh, class discussion, so that doesn't really apply to online classes. And then the rest of this is some sort of administrative stuff, um, how much time you could expect to attend, uh, uh, to spend, um, again, uh, make don't don't assume that you can just make up an exam those are those are hard and fast due dates and you need to make those so i do not recommend waiting until the last day to take the exams um don't cheat uh all that good stuff and then here are the chapters that we cover i'll tell you right now chapter 21 and 26 are my favorite i love those um uh I get very excited when we get to those. <laughs> and then here's the schedule uh, that we're going to do. And so here's the due dates. Um, it's a whole week allotted for the exams, uh, so you're not trying to cram in material and that. Here's your spring break. The second exam is due right after spring break. Usually I really don't like this because um, most people are like, oh, I have all that extra time to study, but then they don't study, so that just means you had extra time to forget, which turns into a bad thing. So um, the testing center is open over spring break usually. I think they'll be closed like maybe that Friday, but other than that, they're open. So if you want to go ahead and take your exam here while everything's still fresh in your head, that's fine too. Uh, and um, I don't have the final exam schedule yet, but uh, the finals week is the 23rd to the 29th finals week starts on a Tuesday because of Martin Luther King and it ends on a Monday so that's a little weird but um, I'll give you um, exam due dates as we get closer to there and then here's some other things if it's been a while and you know even though you've been using my lab it's not a bad idea to check out some of these about some of the tools that are in there to to help you because to make sure you're getting the most out of it here's the videos so it's, I think, uh, I'm not sure I had the PowerPoints on last semester, but we've got these. So a video for each chapter and then um, uh, the PowerPoint that kind of went with that video, so the problems that I did. So you can use those as part of your notes if you want or, or not. So the, we've got um, um, mostly two videos for each chapter and, uh, um, and then the PowerPoint that went with that video to, so you can use that as your notes. If you look at the assignments, you can see that there's just one for each. So I've condensed things a little bit. I've taken a few things out and just kind of condensed it so there's just one assignment for each chapter. So if we look here at chapter um, 12, all these problems that start with an S, those are the ones that I'm doing in the videos. And then um, these are the E's and the P's, are the longer problems that you're doing on your own. So um, 
you can uh, kind of work through those use these s ones to kind of learn what you're doing and then apply it in in these in the longer problems so just one for each one uh, I took the quizzes out because I feel like people were using the quizzes instead of the homework um, and the homework is the really important part that I want you to focus on I'll add back in those quizzes I'll kind of consolidate them and put those in as practice exams when we when we get to the exam time so you can use the quizzes to review but um, I want you to spend the bulk of your work of your time in the homework so just one for each chapter slowing that down a little bit um, the study plan again if you want extra practice in something I always go here to all chapters and then uh, yeah let's say um, I'm doing uh, uh, the statement of cash flows and so I'm fine with this section I'm fine with this section it's when we get uh, um, well, let's say here's the thing I'm well that's probably not a great one but here's all the problems related to one topic and so you can do as many or a few of these as you want short ones long ones whatever just to, and this does not affect your grade at all but if you just want extra practice on one topic you know this is this is where you can go to do that uh, let's say we're doing chapter 12 and you're like I'm good with this I'm good with all this but this is the one this is the one where I need some extra practice and so you can just do a little extra practice there um, your e-text and your library uh, um, chapter resources would have their pa the publishers powerpoints and other videos and that kind of stuff they've got all kinds of stuff in here you don't have to use all of it but um, you've got the demo docs are, are some things where they are um, working through problems some of those are kind of good uh, let's say you want to look for videos um, so I'm in chapter 12 videos here's the one so these are they kind of take the chapter and break it down into mini lectures so if you'd rather watch these than mine you can certainly do that um, these triads are where they're solving a problem they're doing it so the the triads problems are in your book you know if you're looking at that and then here's them solving it so uh, this is just another way to to see it you can read it you can watch it you can listen to it you can get this information whatever way and again I don't recommend trying to do all of it that's a lot but you've got um, uh, a lot of different options so see what works best for you what makes it stick better you know and so um, so you've got that for every chapter as well so I think that's I think that's everything um, uh, again we start with one per week and you've got a schedule there you've also got the, the due dates right here along the, the side to tell you e when each one's due and um, also oh don't forget about um, when you are doing a problem sorry where'd you go some of the best tools some of the 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 most helpful tools for an online student are if you go where'd you go here to the question help so let's make that bigger the question help uh, help me solve this walks you through step by step it takes a, a similar problem and same problem different numbers usually and walks you through it step by step and shows you how they calculate each number and uh, and so you can skip ahead skip ahead and they show you how they got all these numbers um, and then uh, then you can go back and do that problem other question help the demo docs if they have that if there's videos they'll put that in here and then there's always ask my instructor if you send me this link I can see exactly what you're seeing and that makes it um, a lot easier for me to to answer it so don't forget about those tools those are very useful tools for um, for the online student help me solve this and ask my instructor and then like I said the 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 demo docs are good ones and the videos too so try them all out see what works for you and um, let me know if you have any questions I'm looking to, forward to a good semester this is we get some fun stuff in here so um, talk to you soon